First action is approving the minutes. Uh, we had a May 30th executive session uh, and a June 7th and, and 9th uh, open meeting and executive session both days. Can I make a motion to approve minutes? I wasn't there for any of the meetings. Can I still vote to approve them? There is a school of thought that yes, you yes. can. Oh, well, then I, okay. I'm part of that school of thought now. Okay. <laughs> Okay, minutes approved. Okay, moving on. Comments from the public? Dan? Susan, do you have comments? Uh, I just didn't know if there's any updates on the break in, so I was hoping the chief would be here. Oh, yeah. Um, All right. Can we defer that to when the chief is here, maybe? Yeah. Uh, he is sick. Oh. So he will not be attending tonight's meeting. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So there's. Then the next appointment, well, Keith, not till 6.15. Okay, let's go to... He did just pull in, but if you want to... Okay. Maybe there's something we can get done before he gets in. Do you want to go home? Early? Do you want to do my eight earlier? We could. Do you want to start the historical commission? Then you don't have to stay. Is it a long discussion? Um, I don't think so. I think what we want to do is pretty straightforward. Okay. The 250th anniversary is actually coming up relatively soon, four years, and I think it's going to take a lot of time to put together. So the Historical Commission's recommendation is that a committee be formed, uh, authorized by the select board, with representatives of all different committees across the community, because this is something that is way bigger than any one committee. So if there's a representative from the recreation, representative from agriculture, whatever, to get to form a committee to then start working on plans. Once that committee is formed, there was discussion we want to get involvement from other community organizations, but we don't, such as the church, you know, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, 4-H, whatever, um, but that's not within your office, so we can't ask you to appoint people from those organizations. But we'd like to ask you to ask these other committees to appoint someone to serve, I guess I don't know how this works, to like formulate a committee and then ask all of the committees within, in town to ask someone to serve on that committee so that there's a joint committee spearheading the plans. I wonder if, if someone could write an article for the town newsletter soliciting people who are interested as well. Absolutely. To, 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 yeah, I think on that kind of committee as well. I mean, I think that's a great idea, and we obviously want this is going to take a lot of hands to get done. And you know, the historical commission's point of view is we real we recognize the need, but it is not within our office to serve the function. I would be the representative of the historical commission on the committee, but would have no more or less responsibility than anyone else. So you know. As many people as who want to work on this, the more people we have, the better we can make the events. Um, I happened to drive through Conway's a couple of weeks ago. They have, they were having theirs, and we were going that way. And I was really impressed with how many different activities they had put together, you know, how huge that was, and that made us realize again just all the hands we need. So your idea of soliciting from the community. But first, we need a committee to solicit people for. So we're asking you to. I'm just recruiting people to write articles. I thought there was something in this group a lot of not just asking before that. Somebody might have done a heads up. But we also we talked about it at a couple months ago, one of our meetings here, and asked because I think the letter was sent a couple several months ago, April or something, and we talked about it. We were asking the viewing audience for uh, volunteers, and I don't, I don't know who's maintaining the list, but uh, I, I have, I haven't we're still waiting, I guess, for volunteers. And, and I, it was my intent, I guess, to, to do it at the annual town meeting, but I guess it never came up. We had other, other items we, we to talk need, about. We definitely need volunteers, but we need right. to be organized about this. And I think, first of all, we have to have a formal committee for people to volunteer too, I believe. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. We but we also, we really want to make sure that we, it's not just those people, I, I don't get this, 
those people who think to volunteer. We want to actively recruit and make it a responsibility of each of the town's committees that would be involved in this that they realize that they have to, not have to, that they, you know, they should, being my are being asked to thank you. That's so uh, no, not always the most politically correct. So there should be a letter, so possibly there could be a letter from the select board to those committees asking them to appoint one representative to That would be great, yeah. 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 But it could be by X date. That would be awesome. Okay. I guess we could also bring it up. I guess in future meetings, town meetings we have, special or the annual. Yeah, because we would love to have ad hoc volunteers. That would be great, yeah. but we need yeah. to have sort of a core group yeah. representing the various parts of town. In the next uh, phone call for them, maybe? Could it be put on there as well? Because there'll be a special town meeting, I remember, at the end of August. Right. So usually there's a phone call before a special. Yes. So maybe well, we could put it on that as okay. well. What do we need to do to officially make a committee? Anything other than our own volition and having you send some letters on our behalf? I don't know. I assume it's going to be an ad hoc committee, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think what I recall and what our discussion was before that I was trying to add money into our budget here for, mm -hmm. for the celebration and the thought, I guess, of, of the board was that we should ask the committee to tell us how much they need. Right. And I, I would agree that's with that. kind of where we left it rather than, well, my thought was even a token amount each year to, to get it started rather than get shell-shocked the last year for a large amount. Yes. So, uh, so that never happened, I guess. The funding never happened, and, and I guess we're still waiting for the committee to to organize and tell us that, so. Right, I mean, I completely agree with what you're saying. Yeah. We don't want to be hit with a huge bill in four right. years. Right. If we can anticipate and start, well, we'll still have the bills in four years, we start you know, saving up towards right. it. But I think in order to budget money, we need to know what we're budgeting money for, and that would right. be the first task of <coughs> this committee would be to figure out what we want to do in ballpark when it's not cost, so that we can start planning and planning. Okay. Susan, if, are you going to be the point person? So as people get appointed on these other committees, should they be in contact with you? Or are you going to get it organized? I guess for the time being, yes. But I want to make it clear that I have no more power or responsibility right, right. on the committee than, I, than everyone else. Because no. we don't want this to just be spearheaded by the historical commission. Right. But we felt like somebody needed to get the ball rolling. Right. So in the time being, for the time being, I'm happy to serve those you know, just the liaison to get it all together, okay. and then we can get organized as a group. Okay. Okay, we'll do that for okay. possibly next meeting to get something together. So we're talking about sending a letter out to the other boards and committees asking them to appoint members to an ad hoc 250th anniversary planning committee. Okay. okay. And it starts soliciting from members as well on phone calls yeah. in school, yeah. in, in, uh, on FCAP. Okay. Uh, thank you for your, thank you. your comments. If you don't mind, I'll stay just because I want to hear what's happening with town hall, so I'll report back to the staff. Oh, okay. Well, we were in our last meeting, but you're welcome to stay. <laughs> okay. Moving on, I, I guess, uh, going back to our schedule. Chief is not here to be here today. We hear uh, Keith, you're on next for uh, hiring or re replace a retiring employee and, and some other old business items here. Yes. Um, Brian, have you given them the sheet that you conducted some calculations on or whoever did it? Uh, that no, that sheet's not in the packet. Um, so I wasn't. My printer and my computer, I'm not able to print, so I didn't make copies. Um, well, just to basically go over with the retirement of the foreman position, um, the number that we appropriated at town meeting for all the buyout was $10,000 even. Um, calculating the, the sick time and the 
sick time, which is one buyback is one day per year of service, so it's 31 years of service, so 31 days of sick time get paid out, and then on top of it, um, vacation. If he uses some of the vacation that he's going to be accruing as as he goes, will probably come up out okay. If he, the calculation was that if he didn't use any vacation, we would be short like a thousand dollars up at ten thousand. Um, I do believe he was, his intent was to take a little bit of time, but I don't know if he was going to take two weeks, I think is what would have to bring it back down so that we have enough funds. Um, at the same point in time, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, that if uh, you know, money, that was what we had set aside. I still have, in my budget, I still have the funds to, for his position anyway, so utilizing some of that, we're okay. The, the thing that I just didn't want to get in a situation is, potentially could happen is if we hire a new employee, and let's, this is where we need to still decide how we want to handle the hiring aspect. But if we hire a new employee and it happens to be one of our existing employees, then I got to go through another hiring process, which only puts the department down a person that much longer. So um, my intent and my hope was to at least get things rolling a little quicker so that I don't wait, you know, we're, we're in the process of, of replacing him while he's you, you, yeah, using up his vacation time, so to speak. So he had told, you know, his plan was to be all done as of November 3rd. Um, I don't, that's where I, we need to fine tune as to whether he's going to, how much of vacation time he wants to actually get paid out and how much he wants to work until that November 3rd date. Um, I think, you know, I've talked a little bit with Brian um, as far as the, you know, the review or the hiring process. Uh, um, I think that Brian, myself, and maybe the highway department liaison could be that, that would be create an odd number, so we'll have a we can those the three of us can go through the hiring process, make a recommendation back to the board select them. That would be my recommendation if the board is okay with that. Are you looking to have the person start before he leaves or just as he leaves? It's somewhere in that you know, I don't it doesn't have to be really way before, but I just don't want it to be way after, so. Um, right. They're obviously budget implications. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and I'm, that's why with the funds that we have set aside, we're, 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 in the, we're good enough so that we won't have, we're not gonna be really short money. There's enough money to pay him out what is owed to him, and worst case scenario, I would have a, a two-week lag time in there. But again, we will have to go through that process potentially again if we hire from within. Well, I don't see how you can avoid that. I mean, it's a possibility. Right, it's a possibility I'm, and mm -hmm. keep up your employee morale and the other guys that are I there. think, right. It's, so, yeah. Is there any, um, maybe this should be between you and, and Brian and the highway department liaison, but um, it, it seems to me if you really think You've got a strong candidate within your organization already. That that's I that's would, what I we, would not be uncomfortable with, with whatever group deciding that, that's one thing that, that we, we really should do this hire from within and do an mm -hmm. external hire for that. And that's and make those certainly decisions. a potential possibility. And that's why I think the, I'd like to get that ball rolling so that we can discuss things a little bit. Who's the highway liaison? You could also post and just have a lot of in parentheses SIC, strong internal, internal candidates. So you posted it. You, you've made people aware that the opening exists, but you've also made them aware that you really like someone internally. And that covers all the bases. No, I, that's yeah. right. And that's why I'm, 
Yeah. Asking you, you as the board what you're I I handle it to sit down and review resumes on that way. I mean there's nothing that would prevent us from advertising concurrently for both positions. Right? Yeah, and, and if you're advertising okay. for one, it could be that's not that promotion's not effective until if you're an internal candidate, promotion's okay. not effective until it just, uh, yeah. just wouldn't get we just wouldn't fill the position. We just position. And 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 let the, the people know internally that it's posted under a what if scenario and it's not because they should be looking over their shoulders. Yeah, you could you could show them sooner. Right. And the other component is you don't want to be down an employee yeah. come December when the snow starts flying. Right. right. That's that's why I right. I just didn't want to and that's why Ron I didn't say his name but um, that's why he chose to do the timing that you know he, he's trying to maximize because he's not he's just a hair under percentage wise so he still was trying to get as much percentage as he could however he did not want to go into the winter months which would then he realizes the the impact it potentially puts on the highway department having do we have employees do we have job descriptions already drafted job job descriptions oh, yeah. already drafted we have them on Let's just get them posted. So, okay. All right. Okay. So that was that's that part of things. Um, complete streets. The complete street. Yeah. I want you to move over. Brian, talk about this is complete streets. This is finally the tier two funding that we've been waiting for. Um, these would be signed. By the chairs. So this is a cop. Do you want me to give you a quick rundown of quick complete street program? Yeah. Um, yeah. Complete streets program, mass DOT program to make our transportation system accessible to users of all modes of transportation. Mm -hmm. So the mass DOT has a system in place where tier one, you adopt a complete streets policy, which the town has done. It says you're going to try to make your streets more. Tier two is the adoption of a prioritization plan by the town. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are now. And there's technical assistance monies available for that. Mm -hmm. And that's what we apply for um, at this point. And that's what the contract is for. It'd be assistance from the transportation planners at FERCOG to uh, put together, working with the town, the prioritization plan. Once you have your prioritization plan complete and approved by Mass DOT, then you can get, be eligible for Tier Three, which is construction money. Okay. So we are going through the process. It was delayed a little bit last fiscal year because Mass DOT ran out of money. So we were kind of first in line for FY18 funds, and that's what this contract is for. Sounds like something no. that, that I mean, we really need. Lots of bicycles around, I think, especially that's an important way, important to have roads up there. Yeah, I, I think it's a good program. That one, I guess, comment or concern that I have is it says you're going to come up with at least 15 projects. We have that many in locations in town where you're going to come up with we 15. We can divide Haytonville yeah. Road into 15 parts. Right, it depends on how you define the one project. It could be. Well, we will encompass the entire town. Okay, and we have a committee. There's a committee set up to look at this already. Complete streets was was it you and Brian, and was it somebody what we else? Had with what we did a little bit was the I guess I don't know, it was a formal committee that Donna Wiley and myself and Virginia we that we looked at the center of town. But that was more or less a review of what Conway School landscaping design did. Yeah. That they designed and proposed as a, you know, as a um, as a potential design project for the center of town. Correct. So we worked with that a lot. Um, and one of the things that Complete Streets would do would be take that concept that was provided and take it to the next step. So that's one certainly. So, 
I don't know, do we need to really have a... I think as we go through the process, we'll have to be sure to bring different uh, representatives from different boards and committees okay. into the process. I don't know if we need a formal committee. Um, well, what did we do for the Conway School of Design? There was, a, was that an ad hoc committee? I was not that it was even the full committee. It was just like this one. The mission and 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 you know, I think they, they should uh, at least consider what came out of Conway School of Design. And I noticed that was not listed in their activities in there. I think that's more of a generic listing of stuff. But uh, you need to make sure that they're aware that that yes. study is available. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's kind of a generic template. That right, generic. Yeah, that's the exactly. for their contracts. Once they come, when your, once FERCOG comes to us, then we will provide them with our priorities. Okay, so this study will start soon? And it's, uh, what is it, how long does it take? Is there a time limit? Or? Yeah, I had some, I don't know. There was a, it's, I don't remember seeing. There was a schedule here, there's a. Well, okay, yeah, okay, there is a schedule. I mean, they. Okay, completing by March. They have it listed out as March. I don't know that it, has that Should changed take. because that proposal was done on well, starting you're at starting August. I don't think it should take nine months. Right. Um, so I think it should so happen before. We're, just starting about a month, we're starting about a month away from the signed contract date, but you're saying that it might not really push the end to have it an extra month. S seeing as how we already did the, 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 the Conway project, we and should be able to expedite this town? dramatically. What's that? Yeah, mean? I mean, it takes care of the center of town. Well, that's really the center, right? yeah. Right. I think so this there is, is this that is we need I, I get that. Yeah. I get that. But that's a big part of it. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I, it just, you know, geez. Let's, do we have to drag they, our feet with everything? What they took and what they prepared was not necessarily, um, and this won't necessarily be done either. What I'm getting at is, um, it wasn't done by like an engineering firm. So, right. It, there's certainly, it's, it's a concept. Not everything that Conway School prepared. Totally get it. It was blue sky. Yeah. So. Okay. But you're right. A lot of what we need to be done has already been done. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten a sense of the town and all this kind of stuff. So. Yeah. Well, I, I think on the schedule, I don't see. Well, you got a meeting with town representatives. Probably be some kind of town meeting. To Talk about what's being proposed, or maybe even earlier to get input. Okay. Well, that's something I feel Brian and I will yeah, we can work on and expedite some of that stuff. Are two meetings with town representative or with, with uh, town representatives necessary? Is that just part of the statute? No. So we could combine that into one if it is again just repetitive over conversations that have already taken place as long as they are in line with engineering studies and, and, and other more professional narrative that's added to it. I would prefer that to be, yeah, I would prefer that to be some type of, once they have a, a, a draft together, come back, present it to the public, and right. then do a final presentation. As to, it's just, and I'm, I'm even kind of wishy-washy on the last one, but well, the, the first um, the first meeting could be like a brainstorming session with anybody in town that wanted to come talk about it if you're in a special meeting or whatever. So we call it that, not with town representatives necessarily, and then still leave the second one for town representatives. Oh, well, I'm just trying to expedite the process. Yeah. I mean, we're meeting ourselves to death. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, we want uh, the, the mass DOT prioritization plan template filled out with our 15 projects. Right. Something that's got some to be that sort of it's got to be done to satisfy us to the next level. Okay. Is there a due date for the next round of funding? It's an ongoing. It's ongoing. It's, yeah. Yeah, I'd have to look. Okay. 
And do we know that funding is in the current fiscal budget? I'll have to check. I want to say, was, that, I want to say it was, I thought it was for the transportation. Well, I mean, there were $350 million worth of, worth of yeah. line item cuts. I think it comes from the transportation bond bill. Right, but let's see, um, you know. Let me check now. Okay. Moving on to that small bridge program contract. This is going to start looking familiar, Fred. This is the this is the mass DOT contract for the four ninety seven four hundred ninety seven thousand dollars for the Williamsburg Bridge. Okay, and this this will start. When will this start? ASAP. Soon. Are you looking at construction this no, year? No, no, no. Design. It's just this is just design. Design. And permitting construction next year, 2018. Okay, that's next. Community compact contract with a one more thing, if, you, if I could just, I don't think there's anything else that I need to be here. I just wanted to, um, I have chapter 90 paperwork for signatures. Reimbursement, re request to get paid for the work that we did on the crack ceiling and project request for um, the resurfacing out on Conway Road and Weber Road. Um, with my chapter 90 money with the allocations I have, um, I had a, we had a balance right now about uh, uncommitted about 189,000. The uh, project request for Conway Road is 76,000 and some change. That'll bring me down to a little over 100. I still have, um, at this point in time, the funds that we already have a project request, a project open for Egypt Road, which will be completed before the fall time also. And then we're still, we'll have chapter, you'll know, still have funds available the things that are unknown at this point in time going into next year, we won't, we, we should be okay on the Williamsburg Road, but as we discussed the last meeting that our, um, what's the, what's that category? I can't think of the name, but um, contingency. contingency fund is a little tighter than maybe we want it to be. So um, I think we're still in good shape for that. And also, um, I guess that's it. So, um, funding-wise, I'm still in good shape there. Could I add one request for a small add-on? Um, with fall right around the corner, and we all know how frequently it really is used in the fall with all the soccer that's going on. Someone's gonna lose several tires, if not their entire car, in, a, in, in quite a large pothole. Well, it's well, right in the middle, and I don't know down. what the substance of the of that road is, but it's yeah, I, it's in the outfield of the small knot, or it's parallel to the outfield of the small knot, and it's giant. We'll, we'll get that patch taken care of. Okay, great, thank Definitely. you. And then maybe check out other parts of that parking area as well. The other thing that um, and maybe we should discuss it offline, but I've I've come to the point as has the rec committee that those. Um, dugouts that were uh, given to us by the town of Deerfield that we did in our neighbor by take. Let's pull those. They're never going to be used. They're too small for the 90 foot diamond. Um, they, 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 it, let's just let's just take them out. If, if you have the capacity to do that. Do you you gotta just have, give them the Hatfield? I got to <laughs> They don't need them. <laughs> we could put them a little further over onto the state property. Well, there, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, it's taking up Bird watching. Oh, it, 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 it's taking up really, really. Uh, yeah, to, 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 at this point, the time to dispose of them. Gonna need a compactor to something that's gonna have to. It's, I don't have any. Put it on Craigslist. Who knows? I mean, really. Yeah. I mean, there's. Um, it's good. There's gonna be cost to getting rid of them, but if somebody else can use them, maybe somebody with a smaller field is. I, I don't know. <laughs> I just know that we have no use for them. Um, they're taking the, the, the parking real estate down there is at premium. Oh yeah. Oh, oh I, I, Especially in I don't have any problem with getting rid of them, but 
but um, um, let's if they're still actually usable, let's see if somebody else will use them. So I don't know who's you know, on the free cycle. It is amazing. Every, every one of every piece of paper there. You know, it's amazing what uh, someone will take when it's free and left at the end of your driveway. Is this being three signatures? All right, signatures? I don't know. All of everyone needs a signature if I have those reports. All three, okay. Um, and that's, see we used to have a little yellow or little orange papers on there. So this is the sign over here for us here, is that right? Yep. Yes. Okay, yes, and then on this one. There and then down there on those forms. Oh, okay, all right. Keith, is, uh, Repairing the uh, bridge railing on Christian Lane Bridge, is that in your that plan one, sometime? Yeah, that, that just needs a four by six and that'll be, that'll get done before, everyone. that's going to be like a, something that I'll keep doing while I'm on vacation. By the way, I'll be away, I told Brian I'll be away on vacation on um, August uh, 11th to the 19th. Um, that's one of the things that I have on my list for the get done while I'm on vacation. Okay, the, the rest of the railings are fine? It's just yeah, there's no one. structural damage to the, it's just that one four by six needs to be replaced. But we have to sign every one of these pages. Every one. Oh, every one of the pages. Every one of the Six more pages. Mass DOT, oh. mass DOT, right. there's a lot of paperwork. All right, so while we're signing, can we keep moving? Community, okay. Community compact. Yeah. You ready, Brett? When we apply for the community compact, one of the items that we asked for assistance with was um, managing water system assets. And we were awarded a $15,000 grant to do that with the community compact program. What, um, what we had discussed, or, was having some assistance with the um, exploring the merger of the water district and the water department in terms of how the two entities would be merged, account for assets, transferring the assets legally, um, that type of thing. And that would provide us $15,000 to do that. So we'll look at the merger of oh, okay, the assets, okay, of each one. Because we're, I mean, we have the engineering done with the physical connection of the two systems, which is fine, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, we also need to figure out how we're going to merge the two, in, the two organizations. So this, at this point, it's an application to get that fifteen thousand. No, nope. says we've been awarded the fifteen thousand, and we need to sign something so yep. they'll give it to us. Right. Yep. And that's what Fred had. Right. Fred's already signed it. Fred signed that. Thanks. are way ahead. narrow issue of a, a narrow item and larger issue, obviously, um, yeah. which, which um, we should be getting back to fairly soon. The water, the water department should be, should have a handle on what the total estimated costs are for the physical connections. Um, and once we have that, I expect that very soon. And then we should jump into discussions about funding. Yeah how that's going to be funded. And it's, it's a little bit too premature right now, in my opinion. You know. But we yeah. have to think about it. Though. We set up an ad hoc committee for that. Kind of, uh, yeah, there was, suggestions that, that there was suggestions as to who could be involved. Yeah, yeah. With the understanding that the water commissioners control the operation and, and manage the, the water system in Waverly. Um, suggestions we have about anything to do with the water department, they really have the final say on. Do we get the final numbers on pump size and all that, or is that still in course? And yet, I believe this is a meeting on Wednesday. Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday with someone from Mass Fire. Fire Academy. Fire Academy. To Just to basically go over 
and confirm and discuss a little bit more of the size of the wire pump, right of that large, large pump. Okay. So we'll have an outside recommendation as to what that pump should be, provide adequate fire protection to the center of town. While we're talking about water department stuff, uh, what's happening lately with the manganese study? The pilot study is completed? The pilot, pilot study is completed. The report, the mass DP was submitted a week ago, two weeks ago. Um, the results of the pilot study were that obviously this still needs mass DP approval, but it removed a sufficient amount of manganese from the water to bring it under within the uh, under standard, the standard. under the new standard. Um, if you recall, it was a hair over the, it was the hair, it was a hair over the new standard and it, it took out, um, it was effective. So an application was submitted to Mass DP at the same time to get a uh, permit to modify the, to modify the water system. So, so we'll get permission to modify the water system and then we'll have that Berkshire Engineering in the town will go out to bid for um, the filtration system. When do you expect that to happen? Uh, this, this fall yet? Or is that yeah, it depends on when Mass DP approves the, pilot, approves the results of the pilot study and when they issue the permit. But hopefully by, I'm guessing as to what how fast they're going to do it. Maybe within two months, I would hope we'll go out the bid. Okay, we have money set aside uh, uh, alone for what? Is it USDA? So that's the, that's the Clean Water Trust loan. Okay. We've also been trying to get our ducks in a row in terms of bot council and green light letters and getting the financing documents set. Okay. So that's, we still need so there needs to be some, some paperwork for Mass DP to come out before we can advertise. Permission advertise, private regulatory agreement, those types of things. So. Okay. Okay, moving on, housing trust. What is it? Declaration of trust. Yep. So the next step, really there's two steps, two next steps for the housing trust. One we talked about the last meeting and that was the appointment of housing trustees and the other one is the town needs to file a declaration of trust. We need to record a declaration of trust, I should say. And that is, this is the way that the, the bylaw, the, the Affordable Housing Trust bylaw was written, it was meant to parallel the declaration of the trust, so it's essentially the same document with one change, mm -hmm. and that is the Affordable Housing Trust bylaw. It had spaces where the names of the uh, appointees were to be filled in. Mm -hmm. This that is removed. Town Council uh, removed it. They drafted the first one, but they removed it on this one. It is if we wrote names in and recorded it every time a different housing trustee was appointed, we have to re-record the document. So it's, it's, yeah, it's essentially the same document as, with the, as the bylaw. The names were changed to protect the Yes. And it says George Palmer Fortune instead of <laughs> Palmer Okay. And we also need to figure out appointees of appointment of trustees. So we, we had recommendations, Catherine Wolkowitz, Fred Barron, Richard Tilburg. Catherine would be the, the required representative from the CPC. Fred Barron would be one of the open slots. Richard Chil Tilburg would be one of the open slots. There's a requirement that there be a select board member appointed as a trustee. So we have two available spots, select board member and- Did we already talk about the select board member last, last year? We didn't come to a resolution. Ray, we were going to arm wrestle for that. Yeah, you guys were. 
Mono mono. I'd say it's you know it's really up to you, Fred. Uh, we got a meeting coming up next week. Uh, if you want to be there, yeah, I'll be in another country. Okay. So, it, so it won't matter then. Uh, yeah. um, but I, I would, I would say, you know, you're probably better informed on that than I am at this uh, point, and it might be. Um, it might well, well, there's still some. I guess I have some question. Do we still need the house and committee? And is it really committee or just an ad hoc of CPC or whatever? So. Well, we need a housing committee. But do you need a trustee committee, I, I guess, if it, board of trustees as well? We certainly need the board of trustees right. for the housing right. trust. Right, the housing trust. Yes. But right. that, and they only, I, I guess, take action when the trust is doing something. Right. But if the trust is not doing anything, then so you go back to the housing sure. committee to yeah. formulate programs and whatever. Make advisory opinions. Advisory, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything that the housing committee would do that the trustees can't? They can't be the same entity. So there is a different function. Yes. So, so you can summarize what the different function no, is. Well, I uh, just know there need to be two separate ones. Summarizing is way above my pay Oh, okay. Right. If you look online, the, there's a there's a statement for the housing committee. What are the committee is an advisory board. roles and responsibilities are we to, develop to the select that, board. Yeah, and the trust is fiduciary fiduciarily obligated to administer the spending. So if we do this with Fred as a select board member, then basically it's the same people on both. Is that what you're Saying. But it can't. Like, uh, I, I don't. Yes, no. Both well, it's, it's allowed. Is that okay? I guess. Well, there is question. this guy, this James Kirkendall, who's this listed at least on the website as the secretary of the housing committee. Um, James. He's got it's, it's uh, no longer. He's no longer. He's since left. Oh, okay, so the website. So it's got okay. Richard Tilburg. It's got Catherine Roby, yeah. who is a good. So that's the same Mark as Woods, yeah. Yeah. Um, Fred Barron is listed as an untitled member. Right. Uh, Fred. So, so it would, at this point, be the exact same four people. And we need clarification on whether that's allowed. I don't know what would not make it permissible. So there's no conflict there? I don't believe so. Okay. Well, and, and whether we need both committees, I guess, is the other. I, I, I think it is. I think it would. Yeah, but John's point is that this one's got a different mission statement right. yeah. to investigate things, and then this group has got to be the, the, right. the money people. And right. So it, is, right. it makes so sense that there, there, trustee there, very there could be a, right. Right. There could be a, uh, an advantage to having a new set of eyes, I guess. So to me, that's the only advantage of having me on there rather the finance than finance committee on uh, as a trustee. There'd be, there'd be, be an an open, there's an open slot. There's one oh, Fred, 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 Fred. Oh, Fred's on. Oh, oh Fred's on finance, oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Yeah, but he's also on the house, and you really need a. Right. There's so this much overlap here. Uh, this is the Fox right. watching. But this is, well, but, right. but you know, uh, but, I write your name right here. No, in, no. In, defense, sure. in defense of Waitley, we're a small town and these things are not set up understanding that small towns have like 10 people volunteering and I'm being, oh, you know, being a bit right. Maybe grandiose there, but. Well, let me suggest this, because housing is something that I'm interested in learning more about than I know already from owning my own house, which I admit is not, it's a low bar. Um, if, if you would be more comfortable, if I were the select board member on the trust, just so we have not the same exact four names on both of these, then I would be fine with that. Um, there's two places, though, and it just means we can, if you wanted to be on this trust as well, then we just have to post a selectman's meeting whenever there's a trustee meeting, but the selectmen don't have an agenda. But that's easy. That's very easy, because especially since Brian does that work. 
very well, honest. Somebody else really does that work of posting things. Right. I hate to keep you postponing this, but like I say, we're meeting next week. Let's we'll, we'll talk about it. In the com meeting, housing committee. Housing committee, and maybe okay. Brian or Mary Ellen can find out the, the status of both committees and whether okay. we need both. And I'm personally very interested in having some difference. As as minor as it may or may not, I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense to have two organizations that are ostensibly supposed to be the same thing. I see it as a quasi check and balance. And if you have s the same membership, there's either no check or no balance. One of them is pick your take, pick your poison. So I really think there should be some variation on the thing. Yeah, we we never talked about that, Jonathan. It was always assumed that the housing committee would now be the trustees and I guess the committee would be dissolved or whatever. Yeah, okay. That's, right, because then yeah. there's no, but without a committee you have no authority, not authority, you have no committee that's, that's making policy recommendations to the select board and the trust can't do that. Well, select board and to CPC. And to, to, to all of them, but so, you know, yeah. that, but, the, but the select board is the, that's the. Right, okay. Right. You know. Okay. So. Okay. And, well, I, I'm okay with putting it off till yeah. next time. I don't think there's an urgency to getting the last name in here. But yeah. if it, if it, you might be more comfortable if you okay. hash out these issues right. of whether it's needed or not, and that right. um, I don't think that needs to. Yeah. One, one, one thing that you had on your, your screen there, the, yeah. the, the committee, it, it's been, and back, I'll bring it up now just briefly. It's been back in my mind to, to have uh, information on each committee like we do there. We've got the history, yeah. the, the role of the committee, the members. There's a lot of committees on there that all they give you is the members. And if we're looking for volunteers to committees, nobody knows what the Agriculture Commission does. Yeah, they need a little write-up. You need a write-up. Write I know. I think there's a pamphlet be, they put we up. We may be short-handed now, but in, in the future, that's something yeah. we should. Uh, we got yeah. time to update uh, the information on the committees to let people know what they do, what they're responsible for. How do you get volunteers if they don't know what you're volunteering for? Yep. Mm -hmm. And what's advertised back when something's written there, otherwise. You know, you can have the best website in the world, but if no yeah. one knows it exists. Yeah, well, right. <laughs> right, so uh, future activity when we get time, I guess. But. All right, so we've created the trust, and we're going okay. to defer the appointment okay. for next meeting. All right. Town Hall project, uh, we've got final plans and specifications from uh, Jonas Woodsap. Finally, that's the full set over there, and the specification book is some 380 pages. Uh, specifications that the building committee has been uh, working on diligently for especially the last several months to finalize that. Uh, we've also involved Keith on some of these with the septic and the parking lot design and also and removing trees so he's, he's aware of that what's going on. So, Brian did you want to sure. say what we're doing here now? So I also sent you the, the link to the electronic documents as well and, uh, for, with the meeting material. But what I provided here was just the first and second floor plans uh, of the interior. <coughs> we'll start, we'll just start with the second floor. It's pretty much staying the same. It'll still be an auditorium. It's, it's going to become um, the stage and the second floor are going to become accessible with a lift that's being added in the rear. It's a new addition. The, the current stair tower is going to be um, taken down and new foundation poured and a new uh, stair tower and lift installed at the rear of the building. That will make the second floor accessible and it will be many splits in lieu of the existing electric fire boxes. Um, first floor, bathrooms. We should have had an existing plan here. We all know where the bathrooms are currently. Yeah. They're going to be moved to the, um, to the front of the building. Uh, the right side, women's and men's room. Consistent vault is going to stay. The left side is up, it's up the north side. 
the north side of the, of the first floor is going to be um, open space for the historical society, and then the south side um, will be a meeting space. That's the restrooms will be in the front. Uh, there'll be a kitchenette uh, in the rear of the north side. Um, obviously, there are thousands of more details contained in the plans that are probably not worth going into. I don't know if I could go into them. Um, Municipal Building Committee has worked many, many, many months, and Jones Wilson has worked many, many, many months on trying to get these plans right. And what's the what's the, uh, the price that we're looking to, to start for the, the bids? So one point one was around one point one million dollars or so. What the cost estimate is right now? That's without the two add-ons. For one add-on is the parking lot in the front, complete the parking, and the second is the septic system in the back, down the, down the hill behind the swag house. So I'm curious what's going to happen uh, with post office parking during construction. There's some comments on the plan that there will be maintained the post parking and access will be maintained to the post office, to the Smike's house, and to uh, one, and to the mailboxes at the post office. That's a pretty tight area between the mailboxes and yeah. Town Hall Emeritus. Well, that side will be construction, but between the mailboxes and post office, nothing. Really going on. Oh, but no, but I'm saying from the mailboxes to the to, yeah. to Emeritus is is ten feet, fifteen. I mean, no, it's well, it's, yeah, maybe ten. No, I've been there a okay. lot. <laughs> right, no, but that tight. That, that that paved area will be gone. The final plan. In the final, I'm worried about but, during construction. What? How do people access their mailboxes without being inconvenienced? Well, they're not going to be able to drive up to it either during construction or after. They don't drive up to it now. Yes, can they? They, it's, uh, it's, I've seen people okay. drive they, up to they, it. They get out of their car. <laughs> but is it, I mean, you know, we have a lot of senior citizens in town who need who, they need pretty good proximity to that building. Is that going to be maintained? Yeah, there will be access to it. Yes. Okay. Just like the parking in the front will I assume be maintained right from the post office. So. Okay. Yeah, we're still finalizing some of the parking issues uh, in the back with. Uh, property owner we still need to finalize that uh, yeah, parking was was a big item uh, in several meetings it's come up that how are you going to accommodate the people using it if you don't have parking well we've increased parking from I think 19 spaces up to about 27 the latest design so the front and then the side towards the back we've increased parking as much as we can so with Without probably four of those being handicapped or three? Two. Two? Two being handicapped, and we had to provide four spots for Smike's house parking as well. So we've done all that within existing right, existing town property and within the easement for the septic. Two for the town hall handicapped. To handicap, right. And he's asking for the post office. It's the same two. They'll be able to use the same two because they'll be connected with a sidewalk. Between the two buildings. Those are behind the post office. Yeah, behind it. Right. Okay. But during construction, the, the existing one will remain. Right. Okay. Right. And the existing handicapped access, we're not touching that at all to the post office. Right. So. And the town barn? That's in a process of being uh, demolished. I see it's The slate is sad. gone. We made a deal to get, get the slate off and save what we needed patching and now it's a matter of removing the rest of it there so we've got some options we still need to talk about and so in our schedule Brian is to advertise what end of, towards August middle end of August for advertise for bids so construction would start sometime after Labor Day probably after Labor Day in September. Uh, towards the end of September probably um, talking with the architect the main thing that would that they would like to do before winter time is pour the foundation for the um, the rear the rear addition. Uh, there's not 
there's not a ton of other exterior work that's going to take place on the town hall. Right. Other than that, some roof repairs and obviously the windows. But right. um, and everybody that had had stuff in there is removed it. Everything cleared out. Or? Um, it's in the process of being cleared out. Process, okay. Um, I know we still have town items there, which we need to figure out before construction starts. But I guess tonight we'll be looking for for the go-ahead from the board to uh, to put the project out to bid based on these plans. So they look to beautiful over there. Yeah, I'll roll up. They're, they're really blank in here, no, but I, I, I absolutely do not. You need color paper, coloring paper. Or yeah. Beyond that stage. Of All right, I'm good. Based on the municipal building committee's work over the past. Yes. Yeah. I'm good. And thanks to the municipal building committee for work over the past, you know, 30 well, we years. Had the enormous amount of work. It's to be okay. Yeah, I'm good with the plans here. Okay. 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 And it was approval. Moving ahead with the plans. What's next? Priority project list. Review and update. This was tabled from last meeting. Yeah. As I look at these, a lot of these are already moving, regardless That's whether they're I'm higher, sure. medium, or lower priorities. Yeah. Some of them are. Then yeah, some just, are almost done. Yeah. I just some marked done. four that are on the high priority that moving. are either like done or practically done. Like You're the at five. Williamsburg five. Road Bridge, we did we just signed that. And yep. Egypt Road, we just signed that. Town Hall Reuse Community Center, uh, the grants are in, and that's, that's, you know, we couldn't stop it if we wanted to, I don't imagine. Um, the SCEMS housing, that's happening. Uh, not that it's not something we need to, not we, we don't have to be concerned about or anything. But, um, the electric upgrades are done, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. Oh, they are? Yeah. I mean, some of these, so, we're, we're still, in the midst of them, like yeah. Manganese Street. The manganese was removing that. We haven't figured out how to pay for that. But but they're all moving. They they're don't all need moving. any right. push. I mean, you've got and to add to that, um, I tip rates the uptown offices, town hall renovations. I mean, the things that aren't are driveway permit that I know of. Yeah, I don't I think I know a driveway permit revisions is about. That needs a push. Or that needs a push. Revise in the bylaws. Um, the town hall reuse community center probably I don't think it, I'm not sure that that should be on the higher high list right now because let's get the thing renovated first and then we can or at least start at the renovation well what, what are you, uh, which one yeah. is number number uh, six that was I guess how to, how to operate it after <laughs> well and I get that yeah and it's and it's important because right. it can't be just the home for a, uh, an organization, it's a wonderful organization, society. but it's not a town department. But the, the thing that's, that's tied to that is, is the uh, the use of the building and the fees to charge and, and the liability issues of the town and whether that's just for that building or for all town properties. Yeah. Now, we started some discussion on that before and got into either early park issues and we never completed yeah. that and there was a proposal done by I think historical commission of how to manage the building with some liability issues but again we never we never finalized that so there's a starting point on that yeah it's a, yeah. It's a starting point I mean that may come you know if the project is done next uh, June it will come after June I guess or, yeah. or in the meantime still develop work yeah. on it so I read, I read that. Go. Yeah, I read that wrong. I thought this was the town hall reuse community center, the, the physical building you're talking about. I think that's, you're talking that's about the what next I thought. That's what I was talking But it's really operations. Who yeah. operations? So I mean, I, the, the higher priority list is a pretty good good list. And then even on the median priority list, there are four that. I mean, if you add the 250th anniversary committee, which we talked Just about pushed. tonight, there are four that are moving there. Number two, finish this. Right. Oh, so there are five. That's yeah. done. Okay. I like this. And six is done. Crossing things. Six well, is done. The, yeah. the community compact probably should move up. Isn't it? That's going to be happening. I would. I, and why? Why is community compact incomplete? Why is it what? We were early phases of each one. We weren't really that far along. Right, but it's the same project 
kind of. You know, the Curie uh, compact was for the water. For the water, that's true, yeah. Brian is going to be involved in, in both of them. Both of them. Well, I mean, at this point, the, the community yeah. compact has has turned into the part of the water system merger and the IT yeah. upgrades. Right. So the community compact up and even complete streets up to the yeah. higher priority and leave the others long range plan. The anniversary yeah. committee meeting, but we're not. And if community compact is really kind of cool. part of a bunch of right. others, maybe that. Well, and, and Brian, if the cemetery stone rehabilitation phase two is almost done, we shouldn't have almost done in the medium priority. It's almost done. Put it on high priority so we can understand that it's, you know. Yeah. Okay. okay. Solar projects are moving. That should be probably medium priority. Yeah. yeah. Haydenville Road is moving. Well, yeah, it is. We've had some meetings, but nothing really. Well, the money's in. Yeah. Hey, Road um, Engineer. In fact, I just got an email this afternoon. Uh, you know, they're going to be doing borings, so the design is things are starting to okay. It's moving. It's moving. Is moving. Northampton on board? Um, well, at this point in time. We were going to include, well, maybe you weren't here at the last meeting, we were going to include Northampton in, in a lot of this because we're going to need them down the road. We yeah, should they the should, ball. right, they should yeah. be, but at the moment, the they're out there gathering data and gathering information, so they don't really need to be involved yet in Northampton. For our, for our meeting for August 7th, the meeting on August 7th yeah. with uh, uh, Williamsburg, and right. Paul Dunphy was coordinating it. He invited, uh, yeah. he invited representatives from the city of Northampton. Right, and that's, that's why we don't want them to feel like right. they that's, were. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. They didn't need to be anything up to date with what's going on right now. Okay, so you want to go there? I just want to go to where the, the last date option. They should be involved in that meeting yeah, in there. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. Should I move that up to meeting first? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, probably he'll turn around. Keith and I have a meeting with uh, representatives from Smith College Monday, uh, July 31st. Yeah, yes, July 31st we're meeting with um, Reed Baron, Barentone, something, yeah, I can't remember his last name. Reed, yeah, yeah, Reed Barton is what I can remember. It's a hyphen. Uh, I know one of those um, pain in the butt anyways, names. Yeah. Reed, we're meeting with Reed, I'll say that much. Reed Barton. He's with Smith College? And yes. Yeah. He's in charge of the everything up on way to the way. One thing would be good to, to know is how much how much use is made of that going to the facility or the road because you know that property owner was complaining about increased traffic and all that to us. Yeah. I, I guess I'd like to know how, how, what are we talking about? Cars a day, more oh. 100 cars a day. I, I, I don't know. Uh, bus, bus I, loads. Yeah, bus loads. I mean, that's bus that, loads. They definitely go up there with you know, coach size buses come in. The yeah. parking lot only holds like 10 vehicles or something, isn't it? Yeah, some of like when they're the few occasions that like a coach bus will go in there, yeah. they'll just drop them off. And of course, the bus driver stays with his bus, but um, most of the vehicles that go in there are just the Smith College minivan type thing that are carrying eight or ten students. Yeah. That's the biggest amount it's, of vehicles. It's really I mean, if someone were smart, they, the neighbors should worry about the popular cafe that's gonna go in there and make a lot of money. It's a it certainly has blossomed into the use by other agencies, other groups too. It's not just Smith College now. There's like I'm gonna sit, just make this up, for instance, like Boy Scouts or the Girls. You know, there's other organizations that are taking advantage of other schools. I want an understanding too. Or, um, you know, it's, it's from the environmental standpoint, what's up there and what's being offered. And when you're trying to learn your field and you're pretty cutting edge stuff, it's out there in the you're out there the practical experiences. So. Perfect. Yeah, well, that's hopefully something that can provide us information on how much it's being used. 
just, yeah, I, I drove up here last week when it was dusty again. I, I, I took the bodies with the property on my house dusty again, but we shouldn't be paved on the road just for dust control. We need to look at the use of the road. So. Just yeah, well, again, the, 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 the volume of vehicles is is tenfold compared to what was there. Well, but, you know, if you wanted to get into that, Fred, right, you, you could also have a study done about the, the amount of money that we spend on maintenance of, that, of a dirt road every year compared to a paved road. And I bet the, the return on investment to pay the thing catch up to that annual maintenance. Yeah, and again, it, it, this is where we want to sit down with with Smith and see if we can do a pilot. Or do something yeah, with them as an option, yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, generated project for elementary school. Let's talk about that quickly. This, this predates me. Yeah. Um, I'm told there was a decision previously made by a that it would be nice if the generator was hooked up to natural gas. We all know there's a gas moratorium. And we posed the question to Berkshire Gas if you would allow a hookup for an emergency generator, which will have zero usage unless, unless the power goes out or there's an emergency, and they will still not hook up emergency generators. So either this There's swell people on sits. Either the, either the sits here, I guess there was, there, I guess there's issues with propane in terms of we want a propane tank there and how long yeah. the propane lasts in the tank and there's money appropriated for it. I think there's around $58,000. For the generator itself? Yeah. So, the money. There's no, we're not, we're not getting gas hooked up until this larger moratorium issue for whatever is going to happen, which is likely not going to that be amount of money is three not years. enough to do it however at one point the school had an estimate of over a hundred thousand dollars and I got involved with it with um, Mark Bouchier the electrician in Christian Lane we went over and looked at it and we came up he's he we looked at it and sized everything taking the same information that the school had prepared and could have done it at the time for uh, not forty or fifty thousand off. It was quite a bit less than what the school had come up with. Um, but then along came the moratorium, and everything just sort of like came to a screeching halt because at the at that point in time, no one really wanted. No one was a proponent of having a propane tank sitting there elevated at the school. That doesn't mean you can't bury it or do some other things, but still. That's where it stands. Right, but you yeah. pay for the barrier. Right, yeah. Because no and, company's going to pay for it. And used. we certainly do not want a diesel generator in there um, because the, the biggest problem with the diesel fuel or any type of the fuel oils is the, the shelf life on the fuel. You're better off with a, a, a gas, a propane or a natural gas. So. Yeah. You know, I'm actually comfortable with this running in the low priority because there's a couple of things in technology that are coming up and changing. And um, electrical storage is coming down in price. And if you're going to not use it all that often, you don't need a lot of solar panels to trickle charge something. Um, there, there may be something in the, the next couple of years that is going to change the way we look at that. And so I, I sort of feel like we're, we're not in a great position on account of the moratorium and such, but we've already put aside some money for it. And maybe it's, it's worth uh, waiting a little bit and not, pu not pushing on that one so much. I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay. The good news is the propane tank wasn't next to the tobacco barn. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a plus here. They have a big yeah. fire going in. Yeah, I've seen them explode before yeah. on fire on trucks. Uh, to my property, the housing committee is still looking at that. We're not sure what we're going to do. Uh, early Park, Jonathan, we talked about that earlier. Yeah, I mean, at some point we have to try to 
we invigorate conversations with property owners. If, uh, you know, the dugout thing, again, in the infinite wisdom of people from yesteryear, they built part of Hurley Park on somebody else's property. Um, and out of the generosity of the landowner, he allows us to continue to use it. Um, I, but I, I do think at some point there needs to be some partnership resolution that we need yeah. dugouts there. I mean, we know enough about things like sun exposure and, and, and skin cancer. People are baking out there. B-A-K-I-N-G as opposed to B-A-C-O-N. And and it just there there needs and you know high, our our high school kids are out there every spring you know it just there's got to be, I don't know how to move it forward so it shouldn't move up on the priority list but it you know it's a tough one it's a tough one okay, okay. Uh, can I ask Brian for our next meeting just update this list what we've been telling you so we can have a yeah. current list okay. Anything else we need to talk about? The, the regional police, is that is that off? Regional? Or is that yes. still similar? I'm okay with not pushing on that, too. I put it on the lower for yeah. leave it Keep it on the lower. Leave it on the lower. I mean, I don't want to eliminate it because it's a great idea, and I don't care what anyone else says. It's a great idea to have conversations about how we can, well. How about regional fire? Oh, now, come on. That would be harder than regional. You're, you're right. But the challenge is with, with, with Deerfield, you have a fire district. Yeah. And so the town has no say over that. Right. No, I understand that. It's bought into a vehicle. So. Yeah. But you think about all the fire apparatus that are in the three towns. Yeah. How much money is that in total? Millions. Yeah. Upon yeah. millions upon millions. Some of it's going for Right, and we're going to have to at some point. I mean, it, it's you could you could you couldn't cut it by you could probably cut it by half. Let's put it on the lower. I mean, we're taking some things off the lower priority. Why don't we put that yeah. on there as a, not something we we want to push hard on, but something we want to at least. And, and the way to move it is to do really a, a strong financial analysis. And I know I don't have the time to do financial on that kind of fund because it would be a significant would be, financial no, I think that would be a community uh, compact. I was just going to say, we need to get some technical assistance from the front company. Or, you know what, some technical assistance from the outstanding School of Public Policy and Administration at New Mass Amherst. Mm -hmm. Because that's the kind of stuff they eat up in terms of practical. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you're, you're a, I agree with your analogy. Or, Analysis of the cost of the three towns, yeah, is expensive, and it's probably more than surrounding cities. And yeah, look at the cities around us. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I don't know. So, I, I, mean, I don't think you have as much equipment as the three towns, probably. It's a lot. Of, it's so, a lot. Yeah, of it is a lot. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll park park benches. Benches. Are we going to put those on the list? Old priority. Park benches. Park benches. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about it last time. CBA funds, hopefully. For where? Center, to fix the ones in the center of town. We talked about it last time. Oh. Well, the benches by the little Vietnam Memorial? Yeah. I mean, if somebody wants to make a, an application to CPA, I don't know what committee that would be. Open space, maybe? Do you have to be a committee to submit a I don't know. No. Do you have a request to the CPA? No. You can fill out the, the you yeah. know, request form. Our, 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 our local veterans. I'm sure there's veterans, yeah, there's veterans organizations. The legion that, that, that march in a parade every they year. Were, and, yeah. Or, I don't know, concerned citizen. Are they really? I have a flag i got to dispose of. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Well, sir, I nominate you to yeah, fill out the fine. CPA Thank and... Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, we're going to surplus property declaration. You've got a list here of surplus yep. property, Brian? 12 cafeteria tables that I think were accepted from Deerfield Elementary a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. We're still here. So do we, can we have a, there? Yes. Can we have the dugouts to the surplus property? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, that was. Okay. Put them on you just a bit. Um, the old roll off container that's no longer needed at the transfer station. One and one quarter ton roller. Is that right? Yeah. One and one quarter ton quarter. roller. Cup Cadet lawn mower. Boom mower from 1986. Yes. There's numbers of tires. And we'll, we'll add dugouts and we'll add eight wooden chairs from the library. And are these going to be like sold tank sale style? Tank style? If this, like if somebody's listening and says, gosh, I could use a table. Or gosh, I could use some wooden chairs. Um, chairs uh, how um, would people who are seeing this be, or might be interested in buying, um, be able to, to purchase or look at things to see yeah. purchase? Well, I'll, I'll have to go back and look at the, the surplus disposition policy. I thought there was something about tag sales on it, but in a version that I had, it was crossed out. Oh. Um, I mean, it would I, I know, like, maybe not if, an of actual tag sale, but yeah. some, uh, is there a process for people who might be listening uh, or, or watching this? If they are interested in any of these items, they should contact myself. Ryan Donna? Um, yes. 665-4400? Yes. Extension one. Extension one. one. There may be a process that we need to go through. Uh -huh. It won't be as simple as stopping by, but um, okay. once we figure out, I mean, the very for some of these, um, we'll have to figure out what's the most efficient way to. Okay. Wouldn't you want to just use me as a bit? Oh, for are some two, of these two regular one people going to use a bit? Use a bit? Well, and for taking yeah, so you know, it's, it's actually, I'm just, as I've been on it, I'm actually surprised that more and more people that I bumped into that say, oh, you know, they talk conversation. Did you see that up for that up for bid on? So there is quite a few people that follow me just a bit. Okay. Which is, it's actually more so the Northeast. Um, but there's definitely, big, Pennsylvania's big with me just a bit. Massachusetts pretty, pretty bit. Um, Thing with me a bit. And it's, so it's an online bid where if you go on and you bid on something, the town pays nothing for that advertising. So it's it's bid anybody that wants to, anybody that wants to look at it can see it. And when you look at it, there's stuff on there that somebody may have a wooden desk that's you know up there for a dollar. The way the system, the way the program works is the they get an 8% commission, which is paid separately, and the town gets the bid price, provided there, you know, if you set a reserve price or depending on what you, if there's no reserve and you start at a dollar and it gets to five dollars, then it sells for five dollars plus they have to pay an 8% commission. So. And, it's, and, it's, and it works like an option. Correct. It's just These, uh, eight wooden chairs, are they comparable to what's in the town So I went up to the library this afternoon and the no. The answer for, for the eight is no. There there is two stacks of chairs probably as, as tall as I am, folding chairs that are of the same style that are currently um, in the old town hall. So they're gonna hold those until the town hall is Town hall renovations are completed. So these eight wooden are different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't want okay. These are these are um, beat up kitchen looking chair type. Oh. And, okay. and, it, that kind of rather than and in my humble opinion, eight beat up kitchen looking fold up chairs should not spend. We should not spend too much time of this august board discussion. Okay. Okay. No, okay. just 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 think. Or well, posting. <laughs> Do you have a price for the dugouts, Frank? Ten bucks. Start it in. Each. Put it on there and start it. Ten, ten for one, ten. fifteen for two. <laughs> Buy one, get one. Half we're we're paying them to take it, or they're paying us to get them. Negotiable. <laughs> okay, moving okay. on. Uh, move on we talked about the anniversary current pilot consultant for next year. Yeah. Solar projects. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that, Joyce? Sure. We had a couple of meetings since last time this board met. Um, 
uh, the first meeting with uh, Brian and myself and the folks from Nexam, um, we did not come to a conclusion. Um, we had just gotten ourselves kind of negotiated to the point where we needed more information um, than we had managed to get ahead of that meeting. We actually had a whole bunch of new information before we went in, um, uh, but they sort of dug in their heels uh, and started making lots of, um, uh, well, polite threats. But we just got to the point, and I started talking about some certain things, and then there was at some point where I just closed my, closed my book, put myself back, and said, we need more information. And in particular, the kind of information we needed was, um, well, let me st take a step back. Our town uh, negotiated the first pilot agreement in the state. And often that's, that was used as a model for others and, you know, people that we did it as a per megawatt, to, uh, you know, ba based on a whole bunch of uh, things that, you know, we didn't really know at the time exactly what would be the best, but we did the best we could at the start, right? And since then, uh, uh, you know, prices have gone up on these pilots. Um, and we haven't done a pilot really since that, uh, that first one, the first and second came in so close to each other, they were just the same deal. Uh, but since then, there's a, a small industry of uh, well-informed people um, who do some uh, more sophisticated modeling and uh, come up with a, a way to uh, support, I don't want to say rationalize, because that makes it sound not rational, <laughs> um, but to, to actually justify, that's probably the word I want, to justify uh, what we're asking for for a pilot payment. Um, they, I mean, they're 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 coming in kind of too low, and that's really lower than what we actually got from them two years ago. And they're at this point they're saying, well, that's the industry standard, and we're like, no, I don't think so. So um, a lot the work that I have to say Brian did mostly um, finding out what other communities had pilots and um, how did they do them. We got hooked up with. Beacon Integrated Solutions, who help them negotiate their pilot. Uh, for and Williamstown, Williamstown. For Williamstown. And a number of other Western Mass. And then, yeah. Um, and so we had a second meeting um, uh, with uh, Paul, who was back in town, Paul and Brian and myself, with uh, Beth Greenblatt on the phone. Um, and we think it will be well worth the roughly $2,500 fee, if it gets to be that high, to hire her to do the analysis. She knows how to do it. She's worked with Nexam. She actually knows something about these two particular projects already because I think she's helped some of the customers um, in their dealings with Nexam. Um, Which was an interesting... It, that was an interesting um, conversation because it sounded like they might not have been completely truthful with us at one of the other previous meetings. I'm shocked. Yeah, I know. I know. They might not have been 100% transparent. So um, at this point, what we want to do is uh, have the ability to hire Beth. Um, her work will not take a long, long time. She can get that done in, uh, probably it's a matter of weeks. Um, she, she's got to basically get the green light from us, um, we can and get her in contact with the next hand folks uh, and let her do her, her work. Um, she does her uh, estimates not so much based on uh, you know, per megawatt versus one thing or another, but based on uh, different kinds of cost models. And uh, she does three of them and then you take the average of those and I have every reason to think that that will be uh, something we can support and take the next hand, and they will have to say yes. And they've worked with her before. And so right after <laughs> our phone call, we went and met with the next hand folks again and said, look, we think at this point we have to go with the consultant. And they, uh, they, well, to use an overly specific phrase, they took it like a man. And they, they said, okay, we're, we know, at least you know, we know who we're dealing with. And We'd rather not do it that way, but you know, if that's what we're at, that's where we're at. Who's paying for Beacon? We would be paying for Beacon. And at what cost? Uh, about uh, well, she's it's in here. She's estimating it'll be about 
2,500 plus travel. Oh, that's right, that's right. We I'm don't sorry. anticipate that there'll be a need for travel. Right. Because uh, everything, what she does can be transmitted electronically. And um, we would just pay for that out of the proceeds or the profit from the ultimate pilot. I would think that's the, oh. the reasonable thing to do. Yeah. Well, I think it would be a, a, a short-term investment as and you're going to get paid back by the difference between right exactly right right right, right. We, can, we, can just justify, yeah, we can justify the expense because of that and uh if it actually i don't know that we've actually uh, budgeted or uh, appropriated any money that we haven't gotten yet so uh, whether we can right. say we take it out of that or we not can, we can, take we can certainly it's cleaner use it as justification right yeah okay so have you actually talked with her with that? yes well on the phone, the phone um okay. yeah um uh, ryan and i and paul and Taya. Um, had a little speakerphone call with her so because we want to understand how it is that she does her estimates right. and, uh, is, is she the only one in the company because doesn't talk they about could, anybody else it, no. could, it, it could be really it could be but I, I don't there's a couple other the talks, so the talks of her being the consultants or partners yeah she, she may have sort of consulting and partners and such, but she's the one who does this kind of work at the beginning one of the things that has struck me when we were in our discussion, we, it, it turns out that the town of Hatfield, I think it was they had 10,000 megawatt in their Omeco territory. Um, in territories us. In territories us. Everything. We, we pressed them on why Hatfield was was able to get 10,000 meg ten thousand dollars per megawatt. Yeah. And their response was, well, Hatfield was on industrial Hatfield was on industrial land, and the town wanted, you know sort of lost, essentially lost opportunity costs. And it, it's not something that they really had to pay. It's something that they wanted to pay or they were willing to pay. And right now we're stuck at 7,000. Yeah. So they're using subjectivity in terms of what value. So, it, well, what that sort of us, it gives, us there's, there's some cushion there. Right. There is some cushion between this industry standard that they're pushing. Right. Um, but that's their job kind of, so I'm not begrudging that. That, that. Right. So they're going to get the best deal for next right. year if they can. Right. So. They're going to tell us what the best deal is, and is that that's information presented to us, and then we have to use that to go to next amp, negotiate, or are they negotiating for us with next amp? How is that? How, how is next They are helping us in our negotiation, but we're still negotiating. They are. Yeah. But they, they will give us basically that we think this should be the pilot payment, and this is why we can document why this is a fair payment. Okay, and if Next Sam still doesn't agree, then what do we do? Go I think they will agree because we, because we, I think one of the things they said was you can't just pull numbers out of the air, you've got to be able to support them. So that's what we're doing. Right. They'll, they'll and, accept yeah, it. They'll accept right. it. See, right now we struggle with, yeah. well, we, we would like something similar to what you did for the, the previous solar facilities. They'll, they'll say why. Well, we want to be able to have some. We want to be able to have something defensible to say. Not just this is what we did for the prior one, but these are the reasons why. It's, right. You're making this. You're making this much money. To, so there's the there's the cost method. There's the so they look at cost. Yeah, there were three methods, and right. some of them had had both. Some of them had both met. There's two that had the word cost in them. And I could, I could look them up. It's in, actually in yeah, here. I remember it's reading it in here. here. And they were. That was kind of one of my concerns. Uh, one of them is speaking of, as an assessor. Uh, one of them is kind of frowned upon by DOR to use to assess property and, and uh, uh, real estate, not real estate, uh, prop, personal property. So. Which one? Right. Well, and that makes sense. I, you don't want to have it as a detriment to the right. solar and expansion. I, yeah. And I, I guess I, I would advocate the, the assessor's office be involved in this study as well to see what's coming up with, because they were involved in the first pilot. Because they're the ones that are going to administer the pilot and collect the fees. Yeah. So. I, I think that there's no problem to the fees. Cynthia did put us on to, I believe his name was Dwayne. Yeah. Dwayne Breger? Dwayne. From, 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 from DEP? No, no, from, from uh, uh, yeah, I don't know his yeah. last name. Yeah. From CEC. No, DOR. Oh, not from DOR, DOR or, or Patriot. 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 The uh, assessor, the assessor yeah. consultant that they use. Right. Um, so we had some ideas from him as well. Right. Now, would this only affect the pilot, or would it affect what they were offering? From the Just the pilot. 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 
Any negotiation for the <coughs> offer to the town? A residence? I don't think we sent a negotiation for that. That's, that was in the uh, CBA approval. I understand. I just didn't know if, if we were changing the, anything. The percentages weren't in the CBA approval. Right. 15% or whatever is right. yeah. offering. Right. right. It was the 20% offer from a different supplier. So. Well, that was my question whether there was a negotiation on that. Oh, uh, I, I don't know that that's something. The 20% was, was for municipal. They were offering for residential. Correct. So, so, so um, is there an action item here, or is this just FYI? Well, it would be a, it would be a, a go ahead to go ahead and employ the services. Of I, I think we have had the finance committee say it's a good idea. I think there's a member of the select board that thinks it's a good, think it's a good idea. Yeah. I think that a member of the action committee board. thinks it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. So we can move forward on this? Yeah, I think I'd ask yeah, somewhere for a, for a time time period where this should be done by. I think verbally she said it was a matter of weeks. It will depend on when she can get. I know, but we could person. be waiting six months or whatever. Well, I, I think I, that would not be weeks. Yeah, next staff doesn't want to wait that long. No, they don't no. want to wait that long. She knows what our timeline is and if they really want to get this done before yeah, I would think in the next couple of weeks we would have you well into. Because right. it's not like Brian's going on vacation again or something. Right. Um, okay, so you're both comfortable with both of us. Okay, so you're comfortable with our yeah. timeliness of doing this. Okay. Okay. So we need a motion to uh, motion move to move ahead on the pilot consultant. All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, what's next? Uh, host Last time. Custom host customer agreement with ECA, ECA Solar. That's the one in Chickabee. This is just, yeah. this is just for Friday. Okay. Um, we signed the host customer agreement with with ECA Solar. This is the this is the agreement between the town and EverSource, saying that the town is in fact yeah. agreed to do the to be the essentially the virtual customer host yeah. of the Chickabee facility. There's a second one. Just you, Fred? Yeah. Is this 11 cents? It's yeah. top, it, potentially, but it, this is just it's the host, yeah. and we have that right. option. But yeah, through this, we have the option of right. 0.9, was it? Was it yeah, yeah. 11.5 cents per kilowatt hour, which is. Versus what, 17? That's yeah, right. seven That's seven a average. Yeah. And I'm sure you don't have any 48 hour things, do you? Town administrator updates or 48 hour? Um, you just can't plan, can you? <laughs> I don't have any 48 hours. You don't have any 48? Okay, that's. But what's happening Anything with in the, the updates? All oh, administrator updates. What's, what's happening, happening with them? next door's occupancy? They're, they're in. Oh, they are? They started paying rent on July 1st. Okay. Mm -hmm. And did they cut the door? Is that oh. it's still part of the deal? Yeah, they have the option. Well, they said they would come back to us before they do it. We would talk about it, yeah. But they're taking the entire space now, or just the garage? They've leased the entire space. Um, town administrator update. Those who use the transfer station know that the new paper compactor is in right. and in and operational. Activity. And a lot of my other updates we talked about with the priority project stuff. So. Okay, our next meeting is August 9th. Yeah. I will not be in the country. I will be out of the country. How's the ball doing? But I will be there for the. Uh, 24th? We can walk back there. Um, 24th. Right. It'll be Fred and I on the 9th, and it'll be you and Fred on the 9th. That's, I think, yeah. yeah. Just what this has around here. And that's still the target date for the special, correct? So you guys are going to have to carry the political water of the town on the special. Mm -hmm. Well, we. Yeah. 
I had the 30th marked as well. We, the 30th is also marked, but I, I'm fine. I'll be in town for the 30th. Right. Well, we have decided on that, 24th or 30th. Uh, I'd love to be there. I thought, so um, depending on the easements and, and what you heard from uh, historic preservation, council, whatever, and their acceptance, do we need to wait for any of that? And in the historic, you need the, uh, what, deed restriction for the historic? But that's, that's already been approved. All that's been approved? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was made at the annual town meeting. Yeah. Can we have a right. special on the 30th one? I, I, I remember there's a reason why we wanted it on the 24th. Is that? I don't recall. I don't have anything in my calendar on the 30th. I think it was about well, who was going to be in town and when and where and how. We, had, we had select board meeting for the 30th. And again, I've got that marked as well. The special town meeting was the 24th. Right. Then we thought to, of combining the town meeting, special town meeting, with the select board meeting. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we, we yeah. <laughs> we might have to go watch is, the, the FCAT footage to find out why it was is last Linnell, meeting. Is it out the 28th week of the last, is it out the last week of August? Do you recall? No. It's not going to affect the town hall? No. Project. Hmm. I make a motion for the 30th. Okay. Well, I'll be here on the 30th. Uh, I'll be here on the 30th. I will check with the moderator. Okay. okay. Can we still do the 24th as a backup if sure. the moderator's not available? Yep. Sure. Okay. sure. Seven o'clock special time meeting. Yep. Seven o'clock for special time meeting, not six? Select board at six. We have select board at six. six. Motion to adjourn. And it would be here? Yes. 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 Second. Okay, favor. Good, good luck.